In today's tutorial, I'm going to share with you five of my favorite secret features of the Luminar for iPad photo editing application. Now, they are not necessarily secret, but they are a little bit hidden. And unless you've been using the application for a while, there is a chance you don't know that they are there. So let's jump into the application, start right away, and let's start with the first feature covering the sky replacement. Okay, so the first feature is focusing on the sky replacement tool in the application. If you get used to using the Sky AI tool in Luminar Neo, Luminar AI, or the older versions, you get used to having an option to add a reflection into the water. However, the Sky replacement tool in the application doesn't have it. There is no controller or slider that can add or remove the reflection. So by default, you think that probably it will not create the reflection. However, the opposite is true. If you add an image where there is going to be a body of water, the application will automatically create reflection. Let me show you. So we're going to navigate into the sky library where I already have a sky that fits this image. And all I need to do is to tap on it and start the sky replacement process. Now it only takes a few seconds. And now when you look at the image, you can see how we have the new sky as well as the reflection in the water. Now you can still do some adjustments to the sky, of course, by sliding the controller towards the right. For example, we can make the sky a little bit brighter to match the image a little further. And if we want, we can make the sky just a little bit cooler to make sure that it match the rest of the scene. However, just like that, by adding the sky to the image, which does have a water in it, it will create the reflection automatically without you needing to do anything. So let's have a look at the before and after, and let's move on the next feature. Now moving to the second feature, which does involve a landscape tool. So we have the image ready. So let's open the landscape tool where we have a choice between golden hour, foliage and fog sliders. Now for this image, we're going to use the fog controller. So let's take the point and bring it up. It only takes a few seconds and the application will add the fog. However, similarly to the desktop version of this tool, the application creates an automatic mask around the human and add the fog behind it. So that way you have a nice fog at the background and your subject stays in a focus. So yes, the fog slider here in the Luminar for iPad has a human aware feature. Now for the third feature, we're going to remain in a landscape tool. So let's open it. And again, let's look at our fog controller. Well, you already know that when we take the slider up, it will add a fog. But what you may don't know is when you take the slider and reset it and then bring it down, it will actually apply the haze effect to the image. So again, let's have a look at the before and after. And just like that, with the fog slider, when you bring it down, you apply the haze effect to your image. Now, before we're going to continue, I want to quickly mention that this tutorial is powered by our brand new Luminar for iPad complete guide. This interactive 66 page guide will help you to unlock the full creative potential of this application. Completed with details, instructions, images, and even video tutorials covering every single tool in this application. This ultimate handbook is a product that you don't want to miss. To top it off, if you purchase it today, first of all, you will receive a free 12 months update of the guide as the application develops. And you will also get our popular custom sky starter pack with skies designed specifically to be used in this application. Now, if you want to get it today, you can follow the link in the description to get the best possible price, or you can find out more about it on our website, cleverphotographer.com slash forward luminar for iPad. Now, talking about human aware features, we have to look at the Structure AI tool. The Structure AI tool helps you to add or remove details and structure on your 
images. So for example, on this image right here, to make it a little bit more trendy, we can add a nice structure by increasing the controller and moving it towards right. However, just like with the folk controller, it will mask the human and only apply the structure effect to the rest of the image. So again, that way we keep a nice skin and tones on the human and only apply that structure effect to the rest of the photo. Again, let's have a look at the before and after, and I think it works great. Of course, that you can do the opposite. You can take the controller and shift it around. And by doing that, adding a little bit of glow to the background of the image. And finally, we're going to move on the fifth feature, which you probably know, but still, let's make sure that you know it and you can use it. Well, for this, we're going to be using the Relight AI tool. And if you never use it before, the idea of the tool is that the application will scan the image, creates a 3D map, and then you can add or remove brightness separately for foreground and background. So to start, you usually take the controllers, bring one down, this time for background, and bring one up for a foreground. Now, the reason why we push the sliders so much is to make sure that we can clearly see the difference between the foreground and background. And this is where the hidden feature step in simply because it's not that visible. And that's this little circle under the foreground light. When you take the circle and move it around, you can actually adjust the depth or what you can control is the line or border between the foreground and background. So by bringing it down, we can actually make sure that we have the foreground only on the model and the background at the back. So now when I reset the sliders, what I can do, I can make the background a little bit darker and the foreground and our main subject brighter. So the hidden wheel at the bottom right corner of the tool helps you to adjust the depth and helps you to adjust the border between the foreground and background. And with that, we are finished with today's video. If you did enjoy this video, then make sure that you give it a like. And if you have any question about Luminar for iPad or Luminar Neo, then write them into the comments under this video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to make sure that you don't miss any of our future videos. For today, thank you very much for watching. Have a great day and I can't wait to see you next time.